This is a video about making a poem, um, and it's particularly about making a poem in a multicultural, multilingual environment, and it's sponsored by Creative Multilingualism, which is a project at Oxford University, which in turn is sponsored by the Open World Research Initiative. And here in our school, we work particularly with the Oxford Centre for Comparative Criticism and Translation, who are very interested in what they call prismatic translation, bringing out all the different shades of meaning that come through in a translation. And that's something that we'll really be focusing on today. This video comes from a very multicultural environment, a very multicultural school. We have nearly 50 languages, and we've gathered some of those different speakers here today. This school is Oxford Spires Academy. It's a school to the east of the city. And I'm Kate Clanchy. I'm the writer in residence at Oxford Spires, and I've been doing that job for nearly eight years. Um, and so I've learned some ways of getting, helping these very multicultural, multilingual students bring out the very best of those multilingual um, qualities of the creativity of it. And we're going to focus today on um, the art of versioning a poem, and a particularly strong poem that you can version across translations and gather new creative versions, especially when you're working with other languages. Um, the, we're going to um, focus on the Persian poet Rumi. Um, Rumi is a much translated poet, and he, very interesting things happen to him when he's translated. He's been translated particularly in the last 40 years in America, where he's been converted from a deeply religious spiritual poet into a bit more of a hippie. And his very long odes have been turned into things which are a little bit more like meditations. But interestingly, when I've been working with Shukriya, who you're going to meet in a minute, who is a Persian Farsi speaker who knows Rumi very well in her own language, she's been working on interesting versions of Rumi in English using the English translations. And it's something about the, um, the rhythm and the free form of the English translations that have inspired her to make her own very much Persian inflected, very creative poems. And that's what we're going to look at today and see watch that practice be extended to someone else. And then we're going to look at the poem of the day, which has been, it, it, it's called Ode, Ode on Exile in um, Rumi's own version, and it's a very long poem. And it's been made into a rather shorter one, which is known as Burnt Kebab, in this version by the American poet Coleman Barks. Last year I admired wines. This year I'm wandering inside the red world. Last year I gazed at the fire. This year I'm Burnt Kebab. So that, that poem depends on images, magnificent, strong images. Um, and even where people do not have very strong English, they can understand those images. So I spent a little bit of time talking about the images with the students. He's writing about not being able to be in your country and wandering and also having lost his love. And he does it through images, pictures. Um, and this is, this is an English version of a quite, is it much longer poem? Yeah. yeah it's a massive, great Persian ode. But in English, sometimes you do it a bit shorter. Um, and he's saying burnt kebab because he's saying that's what he feels like. Do you think, how do you feel like if you were a kebab? Man? <laughs> Just good. Not good? Just good. Eating a kebab is yeah. one thing, but if you were a kebab, <coughs> then you'd get eaten. Exactly, then you'd be eaten. And also what would happen to your, to your outsides? <laughs> burnt. Burnt. Hot. Hot and scorched. <laughs> So he's, that's what he's saying his last, last night. And he's also thinking about his life, because the previous year his life was great. And this year, everything is not so great. Last year I admired, what, admired, I admired wines. So he was very grand, he sat at home, he drank his wine, it's very nice. This year I'm wandering inside the red world. So it's as if he's dropped into his own wine glass and everything is being swirled around. So one moment he's drinking the wine, and the next moment he's swirling in a red wine glass. Last year I gazed at the fire, this year I'm burnt kebab. Thirst drove me down to the water where I drank the moon's reflection. 
So he was filled with thirst one night and he went to the water. Have you seen the, you've seen the moon on the oh, moon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Onto yeah. the pond. And he drank it all up. Now I am a lion staring up, totally lost in love with this thing itself. So now he's enchanted and he's a lion that's looking at the moon. So one night he drank the moon on the water and now this year he's. I think it's so a lion, he'd have been familiar with lions. Are the lions in the Syrian desert still? Yeah. Yeah. Lonely lions in love with the moon. But now, he, now he's lonely and he's wandering and he's gazing at the moon. This is um, a thousand years old, this poem, so oh, yeah. more than a ninth century poem. So we can imagine it the wine and the burnt kebab and the lion in the desert. And you know what those feelings are? Yeah. yeah. Don't ask questions about longing. Look in my face. Because he is longing. Soul drunk, body ruined. These two sit helpless in a wrecked wagon. Neither knows how to fix it. So he's dividing himself up. He's his soul. The soul is drunk from the moon. And his body is wrecked because he's been wandering so far. And the two of them are like in a wagon. Well, you know when your car breaks down, it's pretty bad. Oh. <laughs> if your wagon breaks down in the ninth century, oh. then you're really... If the wheels fall off your car... When I was in the Nam, we were going back to like my... Um, my we were going to my friends. Mm. Yeah, and just the distance from that line, like the, lot, the time it takes for um, me to actually reach the station is five hours. And then halfway there, the car broke halfway in... <laughs> And my grand lives in the mountains, so it was broke halfway, and it was like on the mountain, broke on the mountain, and there was no one there. Oh, no. So you're completely horrible. helpless to pop up a mountain in Vietnam. Yeah. But at least you weren't in an ox cart <laughs> with the wheels off. So he's like, he's in this ditch, all the wheels have come off. Well, people say that now, don't they? All the wheels have come off. Yeah. 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 And all, all his wheels have come off, and he's sitting there with himself, who's the worst possible company. You know, yeah. So not, not only am I, have all my wheels come off, but I actually have to be with myself, which is a terrible, terrible thing to happen. I've got nobody to help me. It's just me. As for my heart, I'd say it was more like a donkey sunk in a mud hole, <laughs> struggling and admiring deeper. Have you ever seen that? No. When a donkey gets stuck? No, no, no I've never even seen, seen a don donkey. What pulls the what pulls the carts in Vietnam? No, um, no, there's not. There's just a lot of chickens in Vietnam. <laughs> Do you have horses still in Syria? Horses, carts. Do you know what it is to be stuck in the mud in the river? And I've the, never been stuck in the mud. And the feet go forward and backwards. Yeah, yeah, it can't go forward. Just really yeah. Hi, right. So what what? What pulls the um, what pulls the, the carts in, in um, Afghanistan in your bit? Um, Are still carts? I'm not sure. Not so much. Mm -hmm. like in Colombia, there are tons of donkey carts. <laughs> they're just <a> yeah. <laughs> and they're like, or they sell like thousands of things, like watermelons, like I random, like I don't know. They just have random pieces of plastic, just weird things. But they're all like really friendly donkeys. <laughs> what would happen if one was stuck in a was stuck in a mud hole? I don't know. Probably all the stuff in the back would come out, and then I don't know. They probably live it to die because they leave a lot of animals to die a lot of the time in Colombia. So yeah, it's pretty sad, but oh well. But it's quite. I mean, it's if you think about how beautiful the images of the moon, I think I really admire him for putting in this donkey as well, because he's not he's not said oh oh I am so sad oh I am the moon in the water. He said these really dark things about feeling like a donkey in a mud hole, stuck and clumsy and stupid and like, you know, probably being left to die, like you say. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> but listen to me, for one moment, quit being sad. Fear blessings dropping their blossoms around you. God. So even though he's in this terrible state, he's listening to the blossoms around him, the blossoms dropping. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, I mean, that's a very short poem, but what a journey those images have taken you on. Mm. All the way from drinking the moon to sitting in this yeah. mud hole. And There's always hope. Yeah. Mm. There's always something beautiful. 
even if you stopped on the top of the halfway up that mountain in Vietnam, yeah. where the wheels come off the family car. The good thing was that I got car sick, so when it stopped, I was really happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just gazing at the window. Yeah. Are your parents playing pretty well? Yeah, my yeah. dad was just going around up and down the mountains to see if there are like families living there, and we actually found one, and they gave us gave us some water. Basically, the engine was broken. It get yeah overheated, so we just get the water, and it, it was fine. It was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Shukriya, who's here, wrote this amazing version of it. And she says, after Rumi, is that something you're allowed to do with a poem? You're allowed to borrow some ideas from the poem? Ooh. And so she, if, you read, if you read it to her, it's then we'll not do that. Okay. Um, a glass of tea. Um, last year I held a glass of tea to the light. This year I swirled like a tea leaf in the streets of Oxford. Last year I stared into navy blue sky. This year I'm roaming under colourless clouds. Last year I watched the dazzling sun dance gracefully. This year the faint sun moves futurelessly. Migration drove me down this bumpy road where I fell and smelt the soil where I rose and sensed the cloud. Now I'm a bird flying in the breeze, lost over the alien earth. Don't stop and ask me questions. Look into my eyes and feel my heart. It's bruised, aching and sore. My eyes are belled with onion skin. I sit helplessly in an injured nest, not knowing how to fix it. And my heart, I'd say, is displaced, struggling to find its place. <laughs> you impressed? Yeah. Yeah. Do you write that poem? Yeah, you really impressed, aren't you? Okay. It's really good. Yeah. And it, she, so she used some of the Rooney things, but it's her poem. That's your poem. It's different. So what she did was she borrowed the. So instead of the tea, I love the tea. Instead of the, the wine, so you know he's sipping his wine and he drops it in the bottle. But she's done it with the tea. So last year, you know when you pick up her, do you have a glass of tea in Syria? You look at, the glass, you know, you look at it in the light and think how nice it is. And this year she's like a tea leaf. You know? And actually when you swirl down a drain, I think it's it's yeah. <laughs> Oh, and the dark, it's great. And the bright skies, everybody here comes from a brighter sky, I mean. So, you know. Even though it's complicated, this poem, it seems complex, in its own way it's quite easy because it depends on images. It's really asking the same as in the previous um, two videos we've made about concrete and abstract. It takes the abstract idea, the year, and you fill it up with the concrete things, the, the images, the pictures that make that year real and visceral and your experience is visceral. So, and also the repetitive structure, this year, last year, last year, this year, gives a nice just shape and form even to really simple ideas and can make um, a graceful poem out of a bunch of experiences. So we're going to talk you through the, the different stimuluses that you can talk the students through so they can get some effective structures. So you're talking about the year, this year, last year. They could write it down on the edge of their bit of paper if they wanted. Or you could just give them the, the stimulus this year, last year. So I'll start thinking about a food. This year, last year I was eating pulled pork. This year I'm in the burger bun. You know, it's that it's very effective that thing about are you eating or being eaten? Think about a food. It, it, it's going to be slightly funny. So last year I was being. Last year I um, nibbled smoked salmon. This year I'm being twirled in the hickory smoking shed. What's happening to you? Last year I hacked off bits of bacon. This year I'm fried. What's happening to you? What about a drink? And then the adaptation of tea, Shukri often writes about tea, but the adaptation of the, the roomy glass of wine, because Rumi's interested in wine, the fine wine, into that glass of tea. What is more helpless than the tea leaves swirling down the bottom of the jar? It's a brilliant little juxtaposition in Chukri's poem. What about a drink? So last year maybe you sipped on your cold lemonade and this year you're fizzing out the top of your own head. What's happening to you? Last year, this year, the images. What about an animal? 
Last year was a tiger, this year's a pussycat. Last year is an elephant, this year is a mouse. Last year was a Labrador, but this year is a wolf. Doesn't mean it doesn't matter whether experiences are positive or negative. What what animal was last year and what animal is this year? What about a road? So was it a, a rocky path? Was it a, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be over the land. Was it a, um, a wavy path through the ocean? Was it a beautiful green sward that you wanted to stroll along? What was last year? What was this year? What kind of road was it? Was it a motorway? Was it crowded with lorries? What about a vehicle? Because that, um, that, 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 that cart with the wheels gone off is very effective in the roomy poem. What about, are you, are you in a 4 by 4 last year and this year you've been work, making your way down the, down the road on an on old bicycle with half a wheel on it? What happened? What, how have you been moving? What about an image for your heart? Something about the word heart, that if you, it takes a poem up a notch, it's a bit like using the sea. If you, it, it's one of the big, really big things. If you, tell, if you find an image for your heart, it's an onion skin, if it's heavy, if it's sore, if it's light. It gives a depth and, a, and, a, and also a movement into the poem. So tell us, tell us an image for your heart. And it's, this is, it helps people to sort of round off a poem and find an ending place, is uh, just address the reader a minute. Don't give them an instruction. Don't look into my eyes. Or do look into my eyes. See the real thing. It takes a little minute to develop a poem. These poets are getting a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more... They're not just doing the exercise, they're beginning to get control of their material. They might want to end the poem, begin the poem in slightly different places. I always tell people to look out. Quite often, young writers think of a really brilliant idea and bung it down at about the second line of a poem. And in fact, it's the end of the poem. And then afterwards, everything they write seems a bit superfluous. And you have to go around and say, no, 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 that needs to go at the end. And look, you do need to develop it a bit more in the middle. That's something I very often see. Uh, also putting the, your, what should be your first line towards the end. Just think about where do you want to begin your poem, where do you want to end your poem. And do remind them that as they get to be better poets, they get to dump the exercise. The exercise just start, gets to start, start to be a, a starting point. We've got some good examples of that. So... Um, Seaman's poem is very much, she's 11 years old, she's very much following the exercise and it's really very good fun. Last year I sipped a cup of chai, sweet to the taste. This year I'm getting filled into the tsunami of the chai, but the spoon stirs it. Last year the sun stared down at me, now I'm searching for the sun. War and danger warned and sent me down this rough, rough and rocky journey. Last year I was near a now I'm a plain rice. Don't stop to ask me. Be thoughtful. Look through me. Broken and shattered, like pieces of glass across the street. I sit on my bed, confused. I'd say my heart is perplexed, maybe bewildered. Inas wrote her poem into Arabic and then reversioned it into English, working with Shukriya. So her poem went on a journey through Persian, English, Arabic, Persian, English, and um, back to this. And you can tell that she's a true poet because she's really taken the exercise and done something quite different with it. This is a direct translation taken from Google, um, up to four lines of the actual um, one. So it might not make sense, but yeah, I would work on it. Last year I had a potential home. The truth is not last year, it's several years, but I have nothing to, to pray for my country. Good faith, five years ago I had a country that had everything. I wish I had brothers, but they cannot come back to life. I lost the most expensive thing I have never had in my heart since. Lost the most expensive. My, my lost my dearest thing. Yeah. 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 And I've never had it in my heart since. So it's about everything. Five years ago, there was everything. 
and now there's nothing. Five years ago, there was everything in this country. And what does it say at the end in your poem? What does it say for your heart? I start to build my, my future. Yeah, mm. like Jadid, like new, new life. New. Because you say that twice at the end, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So it's a new life, a new yeah. life. So and it's, it's a more positive reading than saying at least there is something, a new thing. الماضية كان لدي وطن أهتمي فيه الحقيقة ليست ليست السنة الماضية إنها عدد سنوات ولكن ليس بيدي أي شيء أفعله سوى الدعاء إلى بلدي بالأمان منذ خمس سنوات كان لدي وطن كان به كل شيء أتمنى كان لدي أخوة ولكن لم يعودوا بعد فقدت كل شيء أمتلكه أغلى شيء أمتلكه منذ أن تركت بلدي كان كان لدي زهود أهتم بهم ولكن أتى الرماد وأصبحوا كأنهم فحم أسود قلبي يؤلمني كيدي مع هذا الحال الآن أصبحت في أكسفورد أصبحت أبني نفسي من جديد كأني لم أعد أنا بعد أن بعد أن حرق قلبي على بلدي أحاول أن أتناسى وأقف على قدمي من جديد بدأت أبني مستقبلي من جديد So in summary with this exercise you read the poem Burnt Kebab, um, read Shukriya's version, which is, will also be with the, the notes available with this video. Take your time and think about it. This is an exercise about finding concrete images for the abstract past, for the last year, this year. Sets up a contrast with last year and this year, which gives a structure to the poem. And then you go through the poem and ask the students to say, OK, if last year was a food, what different food is this year? If last year was a drink, what different food is this year? If last year was an animal, what different food is this year? What different animal is this year? If last year um, was a vehicle or a journey or a road, what different journey or road or vehicle is this year? Um, and then you can ask them to say something about their heart because introducing the heart always gives a different image and a feeling to the poem. And you can also address the reader, ask them to do something or not do something. Don't come so near, do come so near, tell me something, don't. Um, and then finally, just to get to grips with using the images, the roomy images, and feeling that they're entitled to them and making their own version in their own language. You'll have some extraordinary results, as we've got here.